Hey, Gestalt Education Nation, uh, new sponsor alert, new sponsor alert. Today, we're excited to announce uh, Dynamic Disc Designs and Jerome Fryer. Uh, we have an awesome discount code for you. Just use the code Gestalt uh, to get a little bit of money off on the, the Dynamic Disc Designs. They're the, the most realistic anatomical disc that we've ever seen. If you caught our, our episode with uh, Dr. Stuart McGill, you saw an entire shelf full of them. Everything from cavitation instruction to uh, dy- uh, disc dysfunction to SI joint dysfunction, all sorts of amazing joint stuff. Joint movement, yes. vertebral movement. Absolutely. So uh, go to Dynamic Disc Designs, uh, use the code Gestalt. As always, you can use the code Gestalt on Core 360 belt to get a, a little discount on the belts there. We love to use that for biofeedback for teaching respiration, intra-abdominal pressure, and how the, the abdominal wall should be working in, during function. Uh, and then the last one, use the code Gestalt Education 10. Those will all be in the description in the podcast. Gestalt Education 10 at humanlocomotion.com uh, to get off uh, some money off of all of his awesome gadgets and tools and uh, rehab uh, materials. What's your favorite, Brett? He's got a trunk full, but I think, you know, integrating the Topro in, I think, has been a game changer for us here at the office. So I think that would be my pick. Beautiful. All right, guys, don't forget, use the code Gestalt, Gestalt Education 10. Uh, visit the show notes and you'll be uh, hooked up. Thanks. Enjoy the episode. All right, everyone, welcome to another episode of the Gestalt Education Show. Today we are in San Diego, California. Uh, we are at Carruth Cellar. So uh, this is an urban winery, I guess it says it right on the bottle there. But uh, So we're sipping on some wine with uh, the one and only Mike Rintala. Uh, we uh, just got done recording a, a little DNS tutorial uh, with you, Brett. You kind of talked about the current concepts at the abdominal wall. It's something that I'm sure we'll get into, but uh, you and your wife kind of uh, masterminded this plan to, to, to get these DNS tutorials out to people for... Or, uh, to get some more exposure for, for people with DNS. And uh, DNS is going to be a huge topic that we talk about today. So I'm going to kind of be a fly on the wall, but uh, to introduce Mike, I mean, you're a DNS international instructor. You have been, I- I'm assuming, pretty much close to when you were. I mean, yeah. you guys kind of started together yeah. teaching. And uh, I know that uh, DNS and the Prague School has had a huge influence on you, Mike. So, uh, I mean, you're, you're kind of an international star. You've appeared on the Peter Atia podcast. You've been on some other big things. And uh, so we're, we're just lucky to be in, in the presence of greatness. Funny. So, uh, but anyway, let's maybe start off, Mike, uh, just kind of, uh, w- when did you first kind of learn about the Prague school and w- where did your infatuation with DNS really start? Um, well, first, thanks for having me on this amazing podcast and coming to San Diego and Solana beach. And, um, so where to start with, with DNS or my first exposure to DNS. Actually, my first exposure was to Prague School of Rehabilitation, and that was in chiropractic school. Um, Dr. Liebenson, Craig Liebenson, was teaching the rehabilitation class. And up to that point, I mean, you guys remember chiropractic school, you know. <laughs> and, uh, no, I don't. Uh, yeah. I've, re- I've repressed that memory for you. Yeah. Well, up to that point, I'm like, okay, why am I here? You know, a lot of uh, core curriculum and all good stuff to know. But it wasn't kind of what I was looking for. And then when I had the rehabilitation uh, class... Uh, the main focus of the class was Prague School of Rehabilitation. So Yonda, Levitt, uh, Vele, uh, all of their approach and the concepts and principles of Prague School of Rehabilitation were presented. And that's when I saw that and read that and started studying that, I was like, oh, this this makes sense. Mm -hmm. So from that point on, I was like, I got to I got to get more of this. This is it, yeah. So in school, um, you know, with the regular classes, I was reading as much as I could about Prog School of Rehabilitation. Um, and then shortly, I believe that was, maybe that was the third year of, of uh, chiropractic college. But once I graduated, I started the rehabilitation diplomate that Liebenson was putting together or... Um, teaching and uh, saw Robert Lardner taught a a class there and maybe a year or two well by I graduated 98 well December 97 but 90 pretty much started practicing in 98 and I think it was 2003 is when uh, Liebenson was putting a group together to go over to Prague school and that was my uh, first time uh, being in Prague being in the Czech Republic 
And I remember, I think it was a six to eight day course. You, you were there, yeah. Brett. Oh, yeah. yeah. I don't know. I don't think you remember it because I remember <laughs> you and Tom Lowe. Corey and, and Corey. Ta, yeah. You guys, <laughs> I don't know if you guys slept. but uh, That means no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but it, with that course, you know, we saw Levitt. It was a year after Yonda had passed away. So I was really, you know, unfortunate I didn't get to see Yonda. But Levitt, yeah, Levitt, I think Vele, um, you know, there's like the first three days of coursework was the kind of the OGs of Prague School of Rehabilitation. And then I remember uh, Pavel started to present. And when I saw that, you know, as you know, it was all Czech. All I know was uh, translating. And Pavel's in his lab coat. He's talking about developmental kinesiology, reflex locomotion. And that was another, like, oh, this. Yeah, this is the guy. This yeah. is. And basically, it, it, you know, it was the evolution of the, uh, you know, Levitt, Yonda, all the, the fa- Voita, all the founders. And Collage was evolving this and then he had his team of prog school therapists which were all amazing so <clears throat> what was weird was no one at that time really knew who collage was no, no. Not all of us were there to see levitt and you know yeah, yeah. people that were carrying on yeah. you know yonda's uh original mission and uh so i always tell the story when he did his part i was the patient and, uh, you know, I was struggling with a shoulder problem at the time and I got up and, you know, like, like you said, there was no translator, there was no notes. It was just a disaster, but <laughs> it felt like someone had stapled my shoulder blade to my rib cage. So like yeah. for once in my life, I actually felt stable, you know, like, yeah. uh, physically, mentally and spiritually, but, uh, <laughs> but anyways, it was, uh, yeah, that, that was, you know, amazing. And then it's kind of been amazing just to see where Pavel's come. Cause I mean, think it's been 20 years basically. Yeah. Well, we, yeah. When that first time we were there and then I think it went a couple more years in a row and you know, you and I, obviously we saw the same thing. We're like, holy crap, we knew this is special, yeah. something, this is making sense. I need to get more of this. And basically like you and I, we've seen the evolution of dynamic neuromuscular stabilization. That The first time we were over there, it was just Pavel's concepts, principles, the way he was approaching and treating and, and integrating developmental kinesiology. And, you know, I, I don't know if we understood half the stuff, but, no. but we knew, okay, this is, this, you know, is making sense. Uh, all right. How do I do this? Right. So, um, from that point kept going on over there, they started coming over here. And so, yeah, we saw this evolution. It turned from concepts and principles. He started developing the specific assessments and then the specific active exercises based off of developmental kinesiology and things started to have a structure and then that enabled us i think to be able to apply it more efficiently integrate it um and you know i was uh, i was doing soft tissue work and mobilizing and you know strength you were like conditioning you're a big stuff. art guy weren't you? yeah 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 active release and i you know i just you started to see how this the DNS concepts and principles and everything integrated so nicely into everything else that we are already doing. And that was something that really, um, you know, again, encouraged me to keep pursuing it and keep pursuing a competency or mastery of it. Because as you guys know, I mean, this is not a weekend course thing. And you got it done. It's a journey. I mean, yeah, I saw a, the tutorial today. <laughs> yeah. Right? Total journey. So it's, you got to, you got to, you know, you got to practice it. You got to practice applying it. You got to flail with it. You got to be okay not being good at it at first. And then the more you, you keep chipping away and, and practicing it, the 
better you're able to integrate it and apply it and then the better results and you know i think that's all what, you know what we're all after is be more effective with what we do and how we do it you know our naysayers you know they they'll you know make fun of us a little bit at dns and they'll say well dns is just baby exercises basically and it's so sad that it's been simplified to that because i look at dns and it's almost like looking out literally like looking out in the san diego ocean right now like it's just there's so much complexity there and potential yeah and potential for application and you know i i when i see that and i i hear the naysayers or the people that um i don't know bad mouth it but i just see that one they don't understand it they may have taken some coursework and i just look at well i didn't do a good enough job of explaining it so that motivates me to then try to become a better instructor or better communicator with um, how to apply, you know, the, the fundamentals that we, that we teach. So, and that's a constant journey. And sure. I think we've gotten way better at teaching it. I think that was our problem. Like in, you know, the early, uh, we'll call it like 2010, that, that era where we knew how good the information was. I just felt like we, as collectively as a group, we weren't as good at teaching it as we, as we are now, you know? And I think, yeah. Everyone's just kind of like, you know, they've aged and we've taught it enough now and we've been around the, the prog school therapist enough now to where I feel like it is, I mean, I always say it's the closest thing to magic and rehabilitation that exists. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and I mean, yeah, magic, but in order to create that magic, it's like that's the tip of the iceberg and you know you, you look at all the practice and work and integration that you've done to get to that point to get those results that look like magic right right well and we always say dns is kind of like the lens we look through everything you know like yeah, yeah. It, the I, gestalt is kind of built on the integration of multiple different things kind of like you mm -hmm. integrating how you you saw the puzzle pieces fit together with <laughs> art and dns and stuff like that and so uh is is that a fair thing to say is that kind of how you you view dns as well or wh where where does it kind of fit in your model we'll put it that way it's it's my overall it weaves within everything else that i do the soft tissue work the art the mobilizing uh the kettlebell training you know strength and conditioning it's an underlying foundation for assessment and an underlying uh, foundation of what I'm trying to do to create that synergy coordination and timing of that integrated stabilizing system. And everything, everything else is our, is our, <laughs> our tools to enhance what I'm trying to do with the DNS concepts and principles. So I think that's where like being a chiropractor is so beneficial because, you know, being able to manipulate a joint and being able to, you know, do soft tissue work only enhances your ability to get better results with, with DNS. Don't you agree? Yeah. 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 And uh, the strength of DNS is the concepts and principles. There's no real cookie cutter, uh, aspect to it. There's, concepts and principles that play into the assessments, play into the active exercises, and then you can utilize your other tools, again, to you know, enhan enhance the effectiveness and the outcome of, of DNS. What do you think? I mean, don't you think that's one of the frustrations people have with DNS is that it's not a cookie cutter approach? Yeah. And when people say that, how do you, how do you respond to that? Um, I understand what they're saying. It, you know, a cookie cutter or a, and a logarithmic approach is much easier to initially implement. But what I've found, because I've done, you know, those other um, approaches as well, and they are, they're, they're really good, they are effective, but it, I didn't get the depth of result that I can get when I integrate the, the DNS concepts and principles. So. Right. You uh, also kind of cut your teeth early on by being in the trailer with the PGA Tour. So you've you got a huge experience with working with professional golfers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so um, back in chiropractic school, you know, one, being introduced to Prague School of Rehabilitation. But two, early on uh, in school, I was just grinding on the books, you know, as like 4.0 and 
Or like, you know, I'm like, oh, Valor Victorian. Summer brag. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Nice, no. <laughs> nice, nice flex, bro. <laughs> yeah. Quit peacocking and but just a, get back to yeah, the yeah. interior. But about a year and a half in, <laughs> a year and a half into it, I'm like, I'm like, what am I doing? I like, I, I couldn't do anything with that with that knowledge and it was all some, pretty little 4.0 it was yeah yeah it was all memorization so what what we me and like a handful of other students did is we formed the sports injury club and we reached out to um, local practitioners that were working with athletes and uh, one of the main ones was Tim Brown who was uh, medical director for the AVP, the volleyball tour, and the pro surf tour. This is in LA, so we're right by the you know right by the beach. So we started going out on weekends. Hey, what can we do? How can we help? And they put us to work doing soft tissue stretching. But within the 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 tents there, you had chiropractors, PTs, massage therapists, orthos, paramedics, emergency room. So the whole every weekend that we'd go out we'd work our asses off but it was like this amazing multidisciplinary seminar uh every time we go out and and we were just like oh my god this is amazing um and we'd come back and we'd tell our friends our colleagues and they're like well did you get paid and they're like no (laughs) or we're like no and they're like well why are you doing it you're like you freaking kidding me (laughs) it's like but it was like this amazing, so once I started seeing that and then seeing how to implement and, and integrate um, what I was learning, I'm like, this whole 4.0 thing is bullshit. bullshit. <laughs> yeah. so, um, uh, so we started doing that more, starting to, to, to learn that integration and um, seeing that multidisciplinary ap- approach, seeing the ortho uh, uh, you know, do the evaluation, seeing a PT, how they how they approach it, and then the chiropractors that, that we are with. Um, Doug Anderson was a, another one who was part of that. Um, uh, Tim and Doug were, were kind of running things. But so, uh, to fast forward, that experience, one, was amazing for learning, but two, the contacts I made uh, when I got out of school... I started doing uh, the, the people that I met in that in those tents and spending the weekends there were like, "Hey, we got action sports stuff. Can you come help us there?" Or we have a velodrome event, you know. So basically, it provided contacts for when I came out to go to these events um, and learn in those group settings, make those connections, and now those people then became my patients. Because you're there, they see what you're doing, so it's learning. You know, that's kind called of a, a way switch, of, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> in the business world, so mar- mar- marketing. You know, anyways. So that then led to coming to the PJ Tour. I think it was 2004 or five. You know, when the local sports medicine docs, who I knew from being at these events, when the tour, you know, was asking, "Hey, who do you know in San Diego who who could come out?" My name came up. So all that hard work in school, yeah. not getting paid, paid off in a in a different way. So with that, then I got I got the into um, the PGA Tour, the P full time PTs on the trailer. They saw me work. They're like, oh, you know, he knows what he's doing. He's he's the experience of working with athletes. You know, you know what they want. You know what they need. You know that you are playing a not a role well kind of a you know a role and you're working as a team so that was uh integration or created that the pga tour opportunity and uh you know and working with athletes learning dns you know art mobilizing the beauty of working with athletes is you see it real time mm-hmm. the results and you know, you see, did that enhance performance? Did that decrease pain? So it was like this huge real-time interactive feedback of, okay, what I'm doing is not working or it is working. And then over time you, uh, you know, you develop the way you practice with the tools you have 
not only to address the athletes, but now you apply that to the general population or the occupational athlete. And in my experience, you know, you tend to be more effective. So it's kind of interesting. We're, we've noticed like with the, the students now, I, I call it the law start of the apprenticeship. It's almost like the students now are less likely to take on uh, maybe a job or a role where they're not getting paid early on to to get better at their craft. And No, I, I see that too. And part of it, there's different pressures than when we went yeah, to school. I mean, they're sure. coming out with big loans, you know, student loans and stuff. So I, I get that. But if you can take that step back and grind a little bit and make it a learning experience um long term you're gonna you know practice wise you're gonna be you know one more effective but two the patients will see it feel it and that's going to generate more um patient you know referrals for for you as a practitioner sure. what are the techniques that you, we obviously have talked about art and i'm assuming you're using manipulation being a chiropractor obviously dns what other tools do you use besides those or is that kind of the three main ones that you're utilizing uh yeah uh art dns uh mobilization manipulation um i did some visceral mobilization work like Baral institute and then more so more so now with like Peter Bittner yeah, sure. out of Prague school with his visceral mobilization and um, those are I'd say those are my go-to you know rock tape kinesio tape you know again kind of playing with all different tools to enhance your effectiveness because the more tools you have the more effective you can be with you know individual people coming in some people will need certain things if you have more tools to address it you get them to where they want to be much much quicker right yeah. so uh how much are you cause it seems like to me you're doing more with the surfers now than you are with the golfers maybe or is that not true yeah yeah um you know with pga tour i used to do like six of six to eight events a year and that's kind of regional there's i think 10 or 12 kairos across the u.s that that cover different regions so I used to do more of that. Um, it's longer times out of the office, and honestly, it's it's not a money maker, <laughs> <laughs> right? Um, and just over time, more teaching. And uh, I had the opportunity uh, the last Olympics, the Tokyo Olympics, uh, where surfing was a or became an Olympic sport. Um, with my experience, like uh, my connections with Dr. Brown, Tim Brown, and um, other people that I've met, you know, with the World Surf League and working out in that environment, uh, I was asked to be part of the USA Surfing uh, Performance Committee. And what we did, it was um, for the Tokyo Olympics, we went to Mamba sports at Kobe Bryant's place yeah, up wow. in LA and I was fortunate you know I was able to meet him hear him speak and his whole facility which is amazing was amazing um, we had all the Olympic athletes, surf athletes come and there was a team of, of us and I was the, the DNS person doing DNS evaluations, giving them specific active exercises to integrate into their training. Uh, Michael Gervais was there, um, Tim Brown. So we all had our little specialties um, and we worked as a team to evaluate and then see where, you know, what the, these athletes needed. And um, <laughs> so there was <clears throat> the World Surf League, you know, when it's in town, just up the coast here I'll go out and I'll be on the beach you know treating those athletes just like in the PJ tour in the trailer um, <clears throat> but that the USA surf performance committee was in, then an offshoot of that and again getting to work with that team of people um, another huge learning experience and, and great opportunity. So I think in your career too, Mike, you've noticed <clears throat> how, like, whereas before, like a golfer might come to the trailer because they don't have their own chiropractor. But I think the trend is now 
most you oh, know, yeah, yeah. Pro- most professional athletes now have their own team, if you will, their own team Cairo. So yeah. um, how has that kind of changed the landscape of chiropractic and treatment in the in sports, do you think? Um, so depending on, on what, which side of it you're on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, so with like the PGA tour, as basically the tour was having us, the Kairos come out and work as a team with the full-time PTs on the, the trailer. And so, <clears throat> um, there would be private guys working with their players who would use the other trailer that was, um, you know, full of like gym equipment and and training. And, you know, we'd still view that as a team, you know, we're there to help the players. They have their private guys, but sometimes a private guy wouldn't be able to provide something that we could. So they'd bring them over. Hey, can you help me with this? So you still have that, that team mentality, but depending on the team and the, the player, um, sometimes it's not a you know it, it can be not a team thing and um, with more of the the private groups you see them I mean you know <laughs> they, they, there's, there's a little territorial <laughs> thing it's like a Game of Thrones out there <laughs> yeah and then if you know just being in this it's in the like World Surf League the the medical teams like that Tim Brown puts together are amazing. And everybody's really team oriented on the trailers, same thing. But then the private guys would, you know, they're all kind of trying to get each other's guys. And, right. you know, so it's, it's an interesting dynamic and, and mix, but, you know, you just try to work with it and ultimately have the, the goal or the idea that you want to help the athlete, you know, perform. Besides your, DNS assessments, obviously. What are some ways functionally that you know that your patients are better, your athletes are better? So are you relying on your palpation? Do you use any other systems that are out there? Or So, um, you know, one, just training my eyes with the DNS assessment is, is the big go-to. But I do a lot of soft tissue work, a lot of the ART. And with the palpation, both uh, joint structure and soft tissues, uh, you can tell if you're being effective or not. You, you feel a change in the quality of soft tissue. You feel a change in the, the mobility of the uh, joint structure. Yeah. And, and so I tie that into um, the DNS work. And then on top of that, uh, you know, talking to the patient, getting feedback, uh, you know, if I'm feeling better tissue quality, better mobility, and I'm seeing better uh, uh, facilitation of that integrated stabilizing system, uh, then they're usually reporting to me the symptoms or pain is decreased. And uh, especially, you know, if it's like a runner or a swimmer or a biker, hey, my times are getting better, but I don't feel like I'm putting out as much effort you know <laughs> so you get the my feedback breath smells better but i haven't been brushing my teeth <laughs> right 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 so you see the um you know you see it in performance you see it in in the feedback as far as symptoms from them you feel it you know so it's it's kind of this you know layered combination of treatment and you know the assessment at the same time really with soft tissue and and the the DNS active exercises. One thing I've been doing more and more is I'll integrate the soft tissue work or mobilization into the DNS active exercises. So now the patient's active. They're facilitating that deep stabilization, uprighting the spine, coordination of postural and respiratory function of the diaphragm as I'm getting in and doing ART or any soft tissue work or applying the, the kinesio tape, you know, or whatever the, the modality may be. So now you're integrating central nervous system. You have the manual uh, aspect of things as well as, um, uh, you know, synergy coordination, timing of deep stabilization and respiration. The question we often get is, you know, should, do we need to be careful by you know, potentially changing a motor engram with DNS when we're working with an athlete that's got to surf today or tomorrow. So tell me about, um, you know, is that one of your worries or you haven't noticed that or? 
I honestly, I, I don't see that that much, but I think part of that is the better you are with the application of the DNS concepts and principles, um, you, you're able to take that into account and dose that change mm -hmm. uh, within a parameter that doesn't affect you, know, you have a little bit of tact. You know that they're about to go out to perform. You may not have like a big old like yeah, fatiguing yeah. session of DNS. You, exactly. Yeah. You can dose the facilitation of the deep stabilization so you don't wear out that central nervous system. You enhance it. You, right. You facilitate it. But part of that comes from making a lot of mistakes early on and <laughs> learning what to do and what and not to do. And everyone's so unique. That's yeah, the other yeah, hard part. Yeah. And then, yeah, then you got to fill out, you know, if, if kind of feel out the individual person, especially the athlete, if that's what they're going to be doing. But what I've, in my experience, it's, it's, not a, it's not an issue if I have, you know, the patience and I don't try to do too much too soon. Right. Mm -hmm. But again, that comes with experiences as well. You know, right. early early on in the career, it's like all the time I'd be doing, trying to do too much too soon. Oh, right. And then getting right. frustrated, and they're getting frustrated. <laughs> and like, it's not working. And <laughs> right? you're an hour behind. It's yeah. not working. And yeah. And then, but then I'm like, okay, well, well, let's take a step back. What am I doing? And I, you know, <laughs> and I think that's a big frustration, especially with students. Or people who just start DNS, they're like, well, how come I'm not getting the results like you're getting and stuff like that? And, I, and what I tell them is, you know, you, it takes time to get that competency or mass, some sort of mastery over that application. Same with the tissue work. Same with the manipulation. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to practice it and it's, a, it's an art, it's a skill. Which, you know, takes us to some of those naysayers like, oh, where's, you know, where's the objectivity or, you or know, the reliability the, the, or yeah. the, where are the numbers, you know, and like for that, um, and I, I think some of the research coming out of Prague school is, you know, they are doing small sample groups and stuff, but they see reduction in pain. They see increased performance. So I think it's there. It's just, you have to design studies to, to, you know. Well, it's, yeah, it's so hard to be uh, be objective with with an exercise, or you know, uh, and yeah. because a and lot of it comes back to assessment. You and guys, it's so individual. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And I think too, like even like when you're teaching, there's all there's a naysayer in every room, and but DNS is so powerful. I feel like by the end of the weekend, you've always won them over just on the power of how strong DNS is. You know, like in the beginning on the first day, you always got somebody who's you know leaning on you with difficult yeah. questions. <laughs> But then, like as the weekend goes along, it is just that it is just so powerful that you can't deny that you may not end up doing it as much as like we'd yeah. be doing it, but you can't deny the power of it. Well, know? that be, that comes too with the, the art of teaching and being able to communicate it in a way to help them understand it, because right. usually the misunderstanding or the um, naysayer or whatever is because it wasn't explained to them in a way that they could understand it. And that comes from experience, you know, teaching as well. And a lot of it too is, you know, checking your ego <laughs> and like, right. you know, which is a hard Humans one. Aren't good at it's that. a hard one to do. Not good at that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's checking your ego as an instructor, but then, you know, you're dealing with egos. And then a lot of times as you're, you're, you're teaching, you're, you know, you basically they start realizing everything they've been doing <laughs> is not tying into what you're telling them, right? Right. So, you know, especially the, you know, the drawing in or the concentric activity of the transverse abdominis, you, you tell, you know, like PTs, and that's what they were taught in school, you know, TVA, TVA, concentric, and you like start explaining to them. And that can be a little point Turf of, war, yeah. a, well, a point of, um, mis, not misunderstanding, contention. but contention and, well, you know, I'm, I'm showing them this and they're getting better. I'm like, oh yeah, it's a form of, you are creating stability, but we're talking about that integration of the entire abdominal wall. And then if we look at function, you know, we're talking about functionally 
uh, creating that because bracing, you know, you, you, sometimes you need to brace, especially if you're, you're power lifting and stuff. But are you going to be bracing and running and playing soccer, like 100% <laughs> brace the whole time? And that's where you talk. And uh, I think the key is, is showing the integration. Basically, what we're doing is we're assessing and treating and training the central nervous system and facilitating or waking up those in, inborn, hardwired uh, uh, motor patterns that express themselves at certain developmental ages. And then people who are like, oh, it's baby exercise. Why am I going to move like a baby? You know, one thing with uh, when I'm teaching, it's so good about the, the poster that Prague School has with the baby and then Alishka next to the baby. I'm like, okay, what they're trying to illustrate here or get across is... Um, the infant going through development with a healthy central nervous system is uh, able to express these patterns as they, they you know, manifest or, or uh, are expressed at certain ages. As an adult, we have different proportion, limb length, um, history, but we still have those same patterns. And we can tap into that with those active exercises focusing on those points, that quality of support to facilitate that pattern to um, help express or get that efficiency of, of tra you know, transfer of force and load throughout the kinetic, kinetic right. chain. So if you explain it that way, <clears throat> then it's like, oh, okay, now I get why you're talking about moving like a baby. But usually it's the naysayer thing. It's like, People just like, oh, well, I don't. I'm not a baby. I'm not going to move like a baby. You know what I've learned? Yeah. The naysayers are typically not people that have been to the courses. Exactly. It's like kind of the outsiders are kind of looking in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Well, and then you see bastardized DNS on Instagram or YouTube, yeah. and stuff like that. You know, people yeah. that are yeah are going so insane, and and like we kind of talked about everybody that's so fired up, and the activation is so right. much, it's almost too much. So then then you're kind of getting a bad name for that. Exactly. So it's. That's why, again, it comes back to us as instructors to try to do our best to communicate it. And then even on social media, give good examples of what we're trying to do and, and say. Right. So that the crappy stuff out there is overridden with yeah. the, this is known, this is actually what we're trying to do. It's like a do. Yelp review. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to drown it out. Yeah. That's right. What do you think about, so most of the DNS instructors also have like a passion project within DNS and whatever world they're in. It could be baseball, it could be weightlifting, it could be yoga, it could be dancing, it could be, you've kind of, uh, you and your lovely wife, Maggie, have kind of uh, always been enamored with these flows. So yeah, like, yeah, yeah what... What, what what is it you like so much about the flows and talk about kind of how you've contributed to DNS with I just like to see Maggie do, <laughs> yeah, do the do the the flow. Um, but besides that, <laughs> one thing I found what what a husband. <laughs> one thing I found early on, you know, uh, seeing the prog school therapists and seeing Pavel, I, every time you're just blown away by their just depth of knowledge and skill. And initially when we started learning, when I started learning for like two years, I'd go to a course, I'd come back and like, that was the most amazing shit I've ever seen. And then I'd be like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> I don't know how to back to ART. It, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, lay down, crack, crack. You know? <laughs> um, and then because I was afraid of, you know, not doing it to their, Right. Competency, yeah. which there's no way I was going to initially. And finally, I'm like, what the hell am I doing? Uh, so I'm like, okay, I just started doing it, picking one thing. I knew I was just hor you know, flailing, but the patient didn't know. And surprisingly, the freaking patient would get better. And I'm like, really? Because I just sucked at you know, showing you this and doing it. But shitty getting, DNS is still better than anything exactly. else. Exactly. <laughs> I'm like, holy shit, shitty DNS is actually a, still effective. So then I'm like, okay, oh, well, I'm going to keep going and getting better. And then I got more and more effective. But that was a whole learning process, right? Of being okay, flailing with it, practicing it. And <clears throat> um, then what I found was if I did the active exercises, 
And then, you know, the individual developmental positions and worked on, oh, if I do this, I can feel this. Then I was able to start to communicate it better and manually cue it as well. And then what I really found was as I started transitioning through the developmental positions, I'm like, oh, shit, that, that really integrates into sub subcortical. So I, I started to see that, okay, the, the kind of the flow transitions and working on the quality of support really enhanced my own, uh, you know, torn, beaten up <laughs> body. Carcass. Carcass, <laughs> which, I mean, is honestly why I got into it is to figure out my own shit. But um, the more I, I started doing that, the more effective I thought. So then I, I started going, okay... I found if you work the individual developmental positions, then you start to work the transitions with the patients, and then the patients start to uh, move that into, or you design a specific movement prep based on those transitions and developmental positions. They were warmed up and ready to go in five minutes versus an hour of foam rolling and riding the freaking stationary bike. And I got to get my blood warmed up, you know. <laughs> we could do five or ten minutes and they're like, I feel freaking great. My nervous system is on fire. I work my respiratory and postural function in the diaphragm. I'm centrated throughout my kinematic chain. And like, holy shit, my PR just went up. My time got better. Or So that practicing that and feeling that on myself kind of you know all of us have our, our you know like you say our passion project so one of that is the the developmental flow and with with maggie my wife her background is dance so basically a trained mover right that's all she moves all her life and she naturally has that centration and that coordination so then being able to play with that and provide that, uh, integrate the DNS, I'm like, you know, I'm like, wow, I'm really good. But it's really, she's like just an amazing mover. <laughs> right. But when you work with those athletes, that gets you better for the people that can't do that. Right. And, and you start to see and like, oh, if you do this here, maybe I'll try that with the person who has no body awareness. Oh, shit, they got better, right? So the movement flow, the, the DNS movement flow is definitely a passion and a, uh, a target or not a target or something that I try to you know, promote and, and teach. And then the offshoot of that was once I started doing that, I started playing with the kettlebell and using the, the weight of the kettlebell to enhance the feel of deep stabilization, centration. Uh, basically, the, the resistance would help me with that awareness and that facilitation. And that's something where, you know, I start to integrate that for patients and athletes. And, uh, you know, th that's where I started playing with it. And I played with the transitions with the kettlebell, and we call it, I called it the check getup. Yeah. You know, like, you know, similar to the Turkish getup, but more specific targeting the developmental positions the transitions and using that weight of the kettlebell which works so well to enhance that yeah beautiful i think it's funny watching all the instructors they kind of have like they're kind of their favorite developmental position yeah if i if you had to pick one what is what's your favorite one Ouch. not a transition just a yeah 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 um, I have to go with the bear. <laughs> yeah. Do you know why? Why? <laughs> why? Because you're loading the hand and the foot. So everything in between has to, you're, yeah. you can work that whole chain. It goes home well too, I think. And Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, and it's, it's enough challenge and load where they're working hard. Um, and it's definitely a, a go-to. It's a, definitely a go-to with, with athletes. For sure. Do you well, have one? Yeah, what's um, I kind of like modified low oblique yeah. just because so much of the throwing athlete. That's my second. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and it's so narrow table friendly too, that yeah, I feel yeah, like yeah. wherever you are, you can, yeah. you can make it happen. It def any throwing athlete that's, that's yeah. on the, that's yeah, a go-to. 
Well, I think too, I like it. If I learned anything, uh, just from my own experience in, in DNS is once you start to feel it yourself, it, it is so much easier to come with confidence to the patient, you know, yes. so many times we have at the start of a DNS seminar, maybe it's an, A. you have the person that's sitting in the corner. They're just there for the lecture. They're not willing to do it themselves. And it's such a missed opportunity because if you start yeah, to yeah. feel the positions for yourself and start to feel like what actual support feels like everything else kind of it's just easy to come with confidence yeah. to the patient. And then the problem is they go back and they're like, DNS sucks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, exactly. it doesn't work. Exactly. It doesn't work. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I think I, I remember when you first put out the check get up. Didn't you do one with a beer too? That was like one of the, one of your first, yes. first Le- check. Legend has it. It was developed while we were in Prague and I fell on the ground and I wanted to get up without spilling my beer, so. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. Even better. Yeah, Very yeah. primal of you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. I love it. Um, that's, that's, that's perfect. Um, yeah, but, you know, it was just something, again, kind of playing with it, doing the, the developmental sequences and the, the transitions. You know, I started playing the playing with the individual positions with the kettlebell the load of the kettlebell and like oh man i can feel that better and I, well now what what happens if i go to high oblique sit and i transition up to tripod like ooh, that felt good right and then okay i can go tripod to half kneeling and now i can go half kneeling to standing and i have you know the bell now i can squat so i just started like oh this is kind of like the turkish getup but I'm going to call it the check. <laughs> <laughs> what a, what a, yeah. what amazing. Just, yeah. <laughs> it always amazes me too, how developmental kinesiology will give your explanation for what's right and wrong. And, and yes, all yes. these, you know, sports and, you know, in baseball, we talk about Tommy John surgery, um, you know, and the gymnast, we have the low back injury and the swimmer, we have the shoulder, but yes, all we really need to do is take a step back and understand developmental kinesiology. And that will tell us what's actually right in yeah. their craft or sport. It shows us how physiologic movement is literally developed. And that then gives us insights into how to assess it. And then also how to address any insufficiencies that we see with that movement, no matter what the, the movement is. I remember you posted, uh, you were uh, pedaling some surfer class or something like that, but uh, <laughs> there, <laughs> you, had a, you had a surfer who was basically doing the most perfect developmental squat you've ever seen. And I think it's a testament to like, if you want to be the best surfer in the world, then you will respect the principles of DNS. And you wouldn't even think about that in surfing, but the principles yeah. are going to apply. No and the, and, yeah. And those principles are developmental kinesiology. And you, once you, once you see it and you see those developmental positions and how they're loading, it doesn't matter what the sport is. You'll see glimpses of those different positions in the specific in the specific sports. So that's, you know, that's Pavel's idea of what dynamic posture is or how dynamic posture develops, you know. And the main thing is the central nervous system creating synergy, coordination, timing of agonist antagonist throughout the kinematic chain, working off of that fixed point of coordination, you know, of approximation of the diaphragms. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the main goal, especially with teaching, people get caught up in like, well, you know, sagittal stabilization, I got to be like this. And I always have to, you always have to remind people like, no, this is dynamic. This has to be happening, happening dynamically. And what you talked about in the tutorial today with, um, you know, the different strategies that people will utilize for stability and again, coming back to... Our central nervous system uh, applying the right amount of coordination and fixed point uh, for the specific load or the specific movement to maintain joint position to keep that um, nice efficient transfer of force and load and that's where that's where we strive as far as training are, are the people that we work with but it's not always easy and we have to communicate to them that it is a process. And we have to be patient with it. They have to be patient with it. And if they are, durability and longevity is the outcome, which 
because at our age, that's that's our you know, that's my main focus. Well, I mean, I I feel like I spend half the weekends of my life trying to tell clinicians and uh, people that are working with patients that to change function, you really can't do this in one or two visits. You know, like I think like those of us who are in the evidence based group, which we all are. You know, you, you, in your mind, you, you, at least, uh, uh, originally you think you're going to fix everybody in a visit or two and to really change motor programs and things like that. You, you just, it just takes more time than, you know, than, <clears throat> and I don't know about you, but what I do find is when, when patients come in, especially chronic pain and they've been to a number of practitioners and then I assess and you see the inefficiency of the, that deep stabilization pattern, you explain it to them, you show them, they're always like, why is no one else told, showed me this or told me this? And then if they, if they can see it and feel it and understand it, they're like, when can I come back? You know, and I'm, I'm, I get it. And then if they stick with it, they start to feel the change it can be a little tug of war at first but once you get that momentum of that facilitation and they feel the improvements it's they're they're like yeah let's do this you well know, and there's kind of, you know. i always say there's two pathways in the chronic pain <clears throat> there is you know you have multiple autoimmune diseases you've had trauma you've a poor diet there's that but then you've also just had shitty care you know like so and that's a lot of people. They just haven't, you know, been fortunate enough to have microntol in their life or somebody that understands what they're, what they're doing. So they end up a chronic pain patient and they're almost like, uh, tight casted or like cornered into this weirdness that, you know, some people like will portray with the chronic pain patient, but and it's, it's not fair. And then, but then you, yeah, you have to, if the chronic pain is due to the inefficiency of the integrated stabilizing system, that's like a no brainer for us and results are huge. But if that's layered on top of an autoimmune disease, you know, like a rheumatoid or something that now you need a functional medicine person. You may need, you know, yeah, a exactly. pain medicine, a psychol you know, a psychologist. So there, there, you have to then be able to assess and, uh, you know, know when you need to call in. But don't you think DNS is so powerful that like <clears throat> it's so effective at changing function that if you don't get a great result relatively soon, you're automatically oh, it's yeah. almost like an exclusionary criteria for you. Almost like know that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It could be a structural problem. Maybe they need some kind of orthopedic right. intervention, or yeah. it's like a chronic pain situation. Yeah. So it's like so good at changing function that it almost like tells a story of whether or not it would category it's in yeah so if i evaluate somebody and you know they have low back or headache whatever the the pain or the symptom may be and i assess and i'm not seeing a whole lot as far as the the inefficiency of that uh, integrated stabilizing system and then i palpate to you know because usually you'll you'll see the pattern of inefficiency you know where the soft tissue dysfunction is going to be. You know where the joint dysfunction is going to be. So then you palpate to reinforce what you're seeing. If that's not there, I'm like, let's get some imaging. Right. You know? Or let's, you know what, let's consult with the ortho because it's not matching up to what I'm seeing with the function. But, you know, especially, if, you know, as a chiropractor, for me, they've been through that. The big stuff has hopefully been ruled out or ruled in. And... You know, I, I, you know, I'll, I'll see them move, and I'll, you know, quadratus, so as hip flexor, kind of like, how's that? Oh my God! <laughs> They're like, how did you know that was, you know, so tender? Well, I'm, how you're moving, and that's part of that explanation. And then they, they have confidence. You know what you're seeing and what you're doing, and they also have confidence. You know how to help them, literally unwind things and facilitate things in a way that can move them in the direction that they want to they want to be i think too i mean we've all been mesmerized by you know the first time you see uh pavel collage work on a patient and <clears throat> he's able to literally he used to do this uh, you know when he used to be coming to the states quite a bit uh we were lucky and fortunate enough to see him do this he'd see patient after patient and he would basically tell them what their orthopedic injuries were on their imaging yeah. without without any history without history or without knowing and basically his and it wasn't he was doing orthopedic tests by the way 
It's that he was so good at being able to not only watch movement, but also to feel protective patterns in the body. Yes. So, um, yeah, I mean, unfortunately, as Pavel's gotten older, he hasn't traveled as much. So I feel like sometimes, like, um, the younger students are missing out on, like, this huge... Yeah. It, but the Prague School therapists are very, very, uh, you know... I look at them, they're like Jedi. Yeah. You know, whenever I, you know, I'll be starting like going like, I'm getting kind of good at this, you know, <laughs> I think I'm pretty good. And then I have them come over and teach and I'm like, I, I don't know. What. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I, I'm just going to retire because they're so good and they're continually evolving and getting better at their craft, which is great because that gives us a goal to keep improving and, and trying to, you know. I had a conversation with Martina recently and she said that, you know, one thing I think like the, the prog school therapists are really good at, they don't need to talk about it or go to Starbucks and study for three hours. Instead they get together and they just yes. practice, you know, and workshop and like, you know, and we, yeah, we don't, unfortunately we don't have that opportunity. Although, you know, you guys are in the same facility, so then you can do more of that. Um, but as far as the, the educational aspect of DNS, one thing I really try to do is, uh, again, I tell people, you know, take some of the fundamental classes, the ABC or the exercise one and two. You'll have the fundamentals. Then do like skills workshops. You know, like we'll have a shoulder one or a hip or a throwing or a movement flow. That's where you have a chance to practice the concepts and principles you learned in a group with guidance. And that's where I made the my biggest improvements with those type of courses. And then coming back to the DNS tutorials, you know, uh, what we're trying to do with the, the 60 minute um, tutorials, you know, people can't always make a course. But now they're going to have this glimpse of the different instructors with lecture, with workshopping to help them improve their knowledge base and their, their skill set. So it's another kind of educal, ed, educational. <laughs> Do you just make up a word there? Yeah. It's, Get this I, I need more wine. Yeah. You're sobering up, Mikey. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it helps them with the whole educational process of, sure. of DNS. What's your favorite class to teach? If you, if you could pick one DNS course to teach, what's the one you look forward to the most? Um, I mean, I, it, I like exercise too because you have those fundamentals and then you're getting into the higher positions. But my favorite are the skills workshops, the flow, you know, DNS flow or movement prep type courses because then you're working the transitions and the individual exercises. You're doing it a lot yourself and you're helping your partner through it so you're you're you know enhancing your you know cueing skills your manual skills but then you're feeling it at the same time which is also going to enhance that yeah. beautiful a lot of our uh listeners uh they always want to know like as you move along in your career how do you not burn out so you're you're a little bit older than me so it's too late what a, <laughs> besides a lot of wine no. <laughs> besides it being um a somewhat good financially rewarding job what are the things that get you up in the morning to go get your teeth kicked in by a bunch of patients that tell you that they're not any better what is the what is the motivating factor uh i guess my own desire to keep being more and more effective with, with what I do and, and game within the game. We talk about this a lot. Like it's almost like besides being there for humanity to help people get better, you're almost also thinking of yourself and the opportunity to be able to get yourself better yeah. as the patients yeah, go yeah. by. And, yeah. and what I try to do is I have the office, you know, the clinic, I have the in the field stuff with you have the, the adult sports. bookstore you have. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, with the sporting events. And then I have the instruction aspect of things. I'm doing more on Zoom with people, which I found actually, I was surprised how effective I can be over Zoom with, you know, training people and working with people. Subtle uh, brag. Yeah, yeah. Little plug. Yeah. Um, so diversifying that aspect of things 
in creating the different environments to work in instead of just, you know, just in the clinic or just teaching all the time. Um, that helps me with the, the burnout aspect of things. Yeah. As far as, you know, uh, clinical stuff. Advice for a young clinician? Uh, find a curiosity or a passion uh, with or something that you know kind of calls to you like for me it was prog school and it was dns was like the major pull and have that thing that you want to keep uh, learning about and improving on and continue to be curious about and then along the way look at all the other tools you can utilize to en enhance that um that probably yeah that's and the curiosity find the what about marrying well is that good that is key <laughs> <laughs> Find the right man or woman. That is the, we always say, that's the thing that you cannot screw up. Don't so mess that, that one. Yeah, yeah. That one is if important. If that's screwed up, everything you've else you've been working for is, is screwed up. So, Well, I, and I think uh, the, the thing that I always come back to whenever we talk about DNS is like if you, I was lucky. I kind of started, I took one DNS class that was a lot of reflex locomotion. The rest has been kind of the new age way of teaching, more exercise based, more developmental kinesiology. I just think like if you have knowledge of reflex locomotion from the past or in the kind of like the older style of DNS, if you will, yeah, there's so much more va value now to adding this component onto it, this way of teaching, this way of viewing instructors and, and that kind of stuff that uh, if you haven't been to a DNS course in a while, like now is, uh, there's no better time than to come to one now. Oh, yeah, yeah. A lot of people that took the courses in the, you know, 10 years ago, they come back to it and they're like, holy crap. <laughs> yeah, this is totally yeah. different. No, that, I mean. R literally, yeah. yeah things and that, really that's wrong. what's happened in baseball, honestly. Like, because, you know, usually in baseball, at least, like I deal with, you know, either you have <clears throat> ENS or you have PRI, which we love everyone at PRI. So, that, you know, that that's, it's not like it's really a turf war. Everything is, has, a, is helped. As long as it's helping somebody, it's, it's good stuff. But I, yeah, but I think that too, like, I mean, you got to see what DNS is now, I think, because then I, I think it's, 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 it's so much better than it was 10 years ago. Yeah. Well, and the, the reflex locomotion, the Voita uh is there those are key concepts and foundational that Pavel built on so it's a huge component conceptually uh, as far as how, where it's evolved to and it's effective in you know cerebral palsy ms you know with with hardcore neurologic issues and and infants but DNS has evolved into so much more and become so much applicable, so much more applicable, easier to integrate, mm -hmm. um, and I think effective as far as you know. Treating. Before people flood my inbox with questions about reflex locomotion, we do not have an avenue for you to learn that yet. But just uh, go to Germany. Yeah, and go to Germany and spend a couple months, right? Yeah. Uh, but we're, we we're semi working on that but i know that that question is going to come up but just know that uh i the principles of voita and reflex locomotion are expressed through dns yeah and so you can have one without the other uh but they work really well together period but if you don't have the background of that now dns gives you access to the principles of those things so, right. uh, which, which I think is, is, uh, incredible. And, um, it's, it is, it's the greatest thing since sliced bread. I mean, it's like looking out in the ocean. Uh, there's never, uh, never a better opportunity to learn more about it than now too. Cause we have so many awesome instructors for DNS, uh, so many different specialty courses. You have opportunities to learn from online now, uh, all sorts of other things like that. So I just think, uh, you know, DNS is we're homers for it, obviously, but, uh, we've been lucky enough by myself. I've been lucky enough to be around so many awesome systems and things and dns always blows my mind even as many a courses if i've, I've sat through with you <laughs> you've Brett, sat through a lot i mean i have sat through i've probably been to more a courses in the last five <laughs> years than anyone i mean it is insane but every time i take something new from it and it still 
blows my mind every time I see it. And so I just think like if I can encourage anything for a younger person or someone that hasn't been to a course in a while, go go find an A course, retake it, re-get those systems and, and re-get those principles back in your brain because that is invigorated in itself. You kind of ask the thing about that burnout. That to me is what keeps me from burning out is to see these new things. So, yeah, definitely. Um, well, Mike, if someone wants to, uh, one, work with you, two, take a course from you or are interested in the DNS uh, tutorials, where should they find you? Um, I'll be here at Caruth Cellars. <laughs> <laughs> For the next three weeks. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, Rintala, Cairo.com, Rintala Movement Designs.com, Rintala Flow on Instagram, <laughs> <laughs> Facebook. Um, what an ego, man. Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. well, you got to be everywhere. Yeah. Well, what do you guys, I mean, when you do this, put this out, do you like, here's his contact? Oh, yeah. Info? yeah. Oh, yeah. No, All right. I'll yeah, have my people contact Yeah. yeah, yeah our yeah. people. Yeah. A whole list. Of, well, I'm going to put yeah. your home address here's my on your cell number. number. Yeah. My GoFundMe page. <laughs> <laughs> We're yeah. going to put his home address, his cell number. Uh, all those types of right, things right, up there, right. but but um, yeah, so yeah, beautiful. Um, well, yeah. and at this point, the one that Brett did it won't be available, but then you've got a lot of other ones that'll be coming up, and uh, some other things. Yeah, like, like what? So you need for the DNS tutorials, you need prior DNS coursework. So take a DNSA and exercise Sport One, you know, um, so you have access then to the the tutorials to enhance your your learning experience. Beautiful. Yeah. We'll all be in uh, in Prague in August, so I'm looking forward to that. Oh, yeah. I'm sure that we'll we'll have some content that'll trickle out from that that trip as oh, well. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> hopefully, Brett will maybe go to the courses this time and not just <laughs> not be drunk. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, well, thank you, Mike, uh, for for uh, sitting down with us, for being a gracious host, and for uh, doing what you do for the DNS community and for chiropractors in general. So uh, it's uh, it's a, it's always awesome to to sit down with people, and especially when we're drinking wine. So, yeah. Yeah. Cheers! Yeah. Cheers! Thank you, Mike. Thank, thank you. Yeah, um, they're a great friend. Yeah. Yep. Good, good. Thank you, Maggie, too. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for keeping him around, Maggie. Keep him healthy. <laughs> so, all right, guys. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll link uh, the DNS website. It's uh, rehabps.com. Uh, that is the best way to, to know if a DNS course is coming near you. So uh, do that. I know, Brett, we're, we're kind of running you all over the country this year. We're on the East Coast for the first time in a while with an exercise one. Uh, we're in New Jersey. We're in Raleigh, North Carolina. We're in Alabama. So we got all sorts of crazy ones Yikes. coming up. But, uh, <laughs> sure, I hope you're not listening. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. So, all right, guys. Well, have a great day and uh, good luck with patience.